Hey, you! So there's this thing that makes living possible, and it's called the Earth. Earth makes all things possible, but problems with our water, soil, and air could quickly destroy the Earth for living organisms. You need to take individual responsibility for the care of our Earth. Taking up 70% of Earth's surface, water is necessary for everything on our planet to grow and prosper. Although that seems like common sense, many disregard the fact by polluting our water sources of rivers, lakes, and oceans. Because of that, many organisms are dying off. Our drinking water has become greatly affected in a negative way, and our future ability to use water for recreational purposes could soon disappear. It's been around for a long time, but it really kicked in um, with the Industrial Revolution when that started, and um, obviously we had a lot of you know coal burning fossil fuels that were emitted into the air. And of course, with Michigan being a big industrial area, especially here in the Detroit area, we end up um, having a lot of fossil fuels emitted into the air. And when pollution really kicked off was um, after um, World War II when we started to make things that were man-made. So, um, you know, DDT pesticides, um, you have your, some of your fertilizers, you have plastics, um, and so stuff that obviously is going to be broken down in nature. Okay, it's non-biodegradable, so it's here forever. Water pollution is impacted by a variety of sources. When it rains and there are not enough plants to prevent erosion, silt and soil find ways into the waterway. Erosion, obviously you have a lot of plants that stops erosion. If you remove those plants, that's where the soil and whatever they have in it ends up washing into the water system. And that becomes a problem, a couple things, turbidity, um, blocked sunlight being able to um, reach the plants that go through photosynthesis to um, you know, get their energy and they're obviously part of the food chain that supports the organisms up above. These sediments cause fish respiration, plant productivity, and water depth to all suffer as aquatic animals and their environments become suffocated. One of the most common forms of erosion here in our area would be just simply water coming off the rooftops of your home or down your driveway, or even off your lawn. All water doesn't soak into the ground. Soil pollution often leads to water pollution. It's the whole groundwater idea. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Um, when water sinks into the soil, it carries chemicals with it, like whatever you might be using on your lawn. And then water moves. It's not like rivers, but it does move between the sand and the clay particles and it usually moves to the lower areas, which is typically your local stream or river or lake, if you happen to live near a lake. So um, it does move underground. And Besides, um, you know, people just maybe dumping things into their soil, they, they can also get in the waterways um, through the soil, it can trickle on down into the groundwater. So that's something they don't think about there. They think, oh yeah, it's going to leak into a river or a lake nearby, but they don't think about the water below. And so, you know, people used to take their oil when they changed their car and go dump it behind the garage instead of recycling it. And then next thing you know, it's trickling down into the groundwater, which could even, that groundwater could then, you know, have a spring into a, a lake or a river system. Some of it is carried, especially in a hard rain, washes down to the ditch or the storm drain in particular. And here in the Rouge River watershed where we live, um, the storm drains are connected to the river. And so anything that you have on your driveway, say your car drips oil at night, um, or let's say you fertilized your lawn the day before and some of it landed on the sidewalk or on your driveway, or let's say your pet is out there in the yard and you didn't clean up after your pet, and then we get a hard rain, well that water carries all that debris down into the storm drain and the pipe leads directly to the Rouge River tributaries around here. So we've actually turned the rouge into a drain. Polluting soil can be done by sewage and fertilizers that contain nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates. These nutrients promote plant growth on land and water. The other thing that's a big problem is fertilizers and pesticides washing into there. So now you have nitri uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, nutrient loading, and so that causes the water systems to be very eutrophic. And it sounds good, oh wow, there's nutrients in the water, however, the problem is you get these big algal blooms, the algae have to die, and then decomposition takes place. The bacteria end up sucking out all the oxygen, or a good portion of it, to um, you know, go through this decomposition, and then those animals that aren't tolerant of having low oxygen levels aren't found there. 
While it is nice to have that A-plus lawn, many of those nutrients find their way into the waterway. Other plants grow in the water, which in turn clogs our waterways and blocks light to deeper waters. And sunlight's a tricky thing. If you have crystal clear water where the sunlight is coming in big time, that is not necessarily a good situation because what will probably happen is you'll get a tremendous plant growth. And you want to balance between having the right amount of vegetation in a lake and not too much. So re the reality is you want some cloudiness, but not too much. And certainly you don't want to cover the bottom with like the silt and soil because again, so many life forms are there. In fact, here at the Nature Center, when we go out to our pond, we often collect the little aquatic insects that live on the bottom. Those are called benthic macroinvertebrates. Uh, benthic means living on the bottom. And if, again, if those get covered over, um, a lot of them can't breathe. It obviously changes their habitat, so um, that's not good. Once these plants grow and die, they also require oxygen as they decompose. This needed oxygen comes from the water, which hurts the ability of aquatic animals to receive oxygen to stay alive. The aquatic animals then die off, which causes a disruption in the food chain that can soon come all the way to humans. Well, organisms and eventually will affect us as well. I mean, we're part of that food chain, even though we like to think we're up above and higher level of that. But, you know, if we're fishing or hunting, and, and even if we live on the waterways, there's a lot of people that live on canals off the Great Lakes, so especially around here too, you have a lot of rivers and, and the smaller lakes that are going to be affected by erosion as well. And if that makes that lake particularly polluted, you know, in a eutrophic sense, you're not going to be swimming in a, a green muck okay, or, you know, using it for anything. So it's not as pleasant also to look at if you've got green muck. Other forms of soil pollution, such as sewage, leaves and grass, runoff from livestock feedlocks and pastures, and other organic material, all have the same deadly effect on the food chain. Well, certainly the water, what lives in the water, if, if um, chemicals or even just silt, um, different soil erodes into your water, then that can uh, cover up fish eggs, um, or say there might be turtle eggs or frog eggs there. It definitely affects the wildlife. It clouds the water, and there's a fancy word called turbidity of the water. It increases the turbidity, which is just a measurement of how um, cloudy the water is. So you want to prevent that cloudiness as much as possible. And so that's what can happen if you allow soil and different things to, to go into the water. dump their industrial waste into and spread it because it'll just wash downstream and they figure okay there it goes no big deal um, and so that's where the problem really started and then a lot of human waste gets washed into the water as well so that's nothing that's new now it's been going on for years decades mm -hmm. luckily our water pollution is not as bad as it's been in the past Congress has indeed passed many water quality laws which acknowledges that the water pollution is a serious issue. The Clean Water Act, um, that came about in the 70s as well, and what started that was um, that uh, there was a river in Ohio that was burning. <laughs> you wouldn't think water is burning, but here it is, and that was because there was oil and other industrial waste that were on there and intermixing and, and just starting fire. So it was it did it several times between the um, 1930s and in the 60s, and so then in um, the early 1970s, they actually um, made a law of, you know, you can't just, like I said earlier, having, you know, your ind industries there using this as a, a waste, you know, just throw your waste into the river or lake and it'll wash away and not have a problem. So they obviously now have a law that you can't do that. So, you know, some people still might try, but if they get caught, they have severe fines and such. So. However, it is ultimately up to you to be responsible for your water. Become informed and involved with our problems. Dispose harmful household waste at special sites so they don't end up in sewage treatment plants or landfills that are not supposed to have hazardous objects. Try to determine what additional nutrients are needed before fertilizers are used and use other substances when fertilizers could go into surface waters. Plant and preserve trees to prevent soil erosion and promote water going into the soil. This pollution, you can do something about. So you say, sure, I need water. But what about being able to breathe? I mean, we need oxygen, right? True, 
Air pollution is another huge problem for all of us. It comes from different sources such as factories, power plants, dry cleaners, cars, buses, trucks, dust, and fires. First of all, you have to think about air as a potential dumping ground. I don't think most people have that concept, but if we treat air like a dumping ground, then we're, we're going to have troubles. Air isn't a place just to send off something that we don't want. It, we really can't treat it that way, because the reality is when you send that something off, just like water, um, when you send it down the storm drain, it has to go somewhere. Problems in our air can threaten the health of all living things, such as ourselves and other animals, as well as plants in the ozone layer. When the air is dirty, it can cause pollution, burning eyes, and breathing problems. Affect your respiratory, effect. especially if you have asthma, it's obviously going to have a, a much greater effect on those people, especially a lot of your, your younger kids, and, and the older people are, are much more susceptible to those you know, respiratory tract problems. Not saying if you're in between that, you're not going to have a problem, but they seem to be the ones that are a little bit more vulnerable to that state. Air pollution clouds are also known to give cancer or even suffocate people. Children are most susceptible to these problems because their lungs are still developing. Air pollution may also cause a visible haze, reducing visibility in Earth's wilderness areas. Much of our pollution comes from power plants, industrial sources, and motor vehicles. Because of that, many people say, there's nothing I can do. Honestly, you have the power to increase or decrease air pollution and protect the health of all living beings. You can change your home, transportation, and consumer habits to help reduce air pollution. The following examples may not seem to get rid of air pollution, but they conserve energy. Conserving energy actually reduces production emissions to the air, which therefore stops air pollution. So, turn off the lights. Use the microwave to cook small meals because it uses less power than the oven. Recycle when possible. Cut back on air conditioning and heating use. Buy the right things. As a consumer, you determine what is successfully sold or what isn't. Use fluorescent lights. Do not use aerosol cans. Buy reusable items instead of throwing things out. And commute the right way. Try using fuel-efficient cars, cruise control. Use public transportation when possible. You must take this option seriously for the care of our Earth. Even one little thing a day can help our air, water, and soil. Once responsibility is taken, a difference can be made.